Hello everyone and welcome to the With Every Heartbeat is Life class. My name is Alteria and I will be your teacher for this session. This session will be one hour long and we will be talking about healthy lifestyle choices to help us all live healthier and happier lives. I would like to let you know that we have revised this program from last year and this year we understand the importance of your time. So now the classes are shorter and more interactive. At the end of each class we will have some sort of physical activity. Today we will do instant recess at the end of the session. We also want to help all of you with your health goals. So we have health goal sheet that I can keep and we can help hold each other more accountable. In order to have an honest and open discussion, we will need to establish some ground rules and requests. I have some and if there are any that you think should be added to the list, please let me know. Here are some things you can do to help learn the most from the sessions. Feel free to ask questions, share your personal experiences, this will make the project mean more to all of us, try to stay on topic, agree to keep group business in the group, agree not to judge others, if you have to take a phone call please leave the room, try to come to all the sessions, do you have any other rules that you would like to add? One last thing before we get started is to know who all is in attendance. So let's go around the room and tell our name and what we hope to learn from the class. Last time we talked about physical activity and how we benefit from having regular physical activity in our lives. Can anyone remember some of the benefits? It strengthens your heart and lungs, build and maintain healthy bones, muscles, and joints, helps you feel better about yourself, help to control your weight, help to lower your blood pressure, control your blood cholesterol, helps you to sleep better, helps to reduce stress and feelings of depression and anxiety, helps to have more energy, and also helps to lower your chances of developing heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. Has anyone made any progress on their physical activity goals? Today we'll be talking about blood pressure and blood cholesterol. So what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is the force of blood against the walls of your arteries. Blood pressure is needed to move blood throughout your body. Which cord 4.1? Which card 4.2? Blood pressure is recorded as two numbers, the systolic pressure as the heart beats or the diastolic pressure as the heart relaxes between beats. The measurement is written in one number above the other, with the systolic number on the top and the diastolic number on the bottom. For example, a blood pressure measurement of 120 over 180 mmHg, which is millimeters of mercury, is expressed verbally as 120 over 80. It is important to keep track of your blood pressure numbers. Write down your numbers every time you have your blood pressure checked. So what number should I aim for? Normal, your top number is under, under 120 or under, and the bottom number is 80 or under. Prehypertension, this means you're on your way to having high blood pressure. Your top number is between 120 and 139, and your bottom number is between 80 and 89. High blood pressure, the top number is over 140, and the bottom number is over, one, over 90. If you have high blood pressure or hypertension, it means your heart has to pump harder than it should to get blood to all parts of your body. High blood pressure rises your chance, chances of having a heart attack, stroke, kidney problems, or becoming blind. High blood pressure is called the silent killer. This is because it often has no symptoms and some may not know that they have high blood pressure until they have a heart attack, stroke, or other problems caused by high blood pressure. So what is a stroke? Blood stops suddenly stops going to the brain and brain cells die. For this reason, strokes are also known as brain attacks. Remember, the blood brings oxygen and nutrients to the brain. So when blood flow is stopped, it is like suffocating and starving the brain at the same time. Now we will review page 108. Note the signs of stroke.
Know the signs of stroke. Act quickly. A stroke happens when blood suddenly stops going to the brain and brain cells die. A stroke is very serious and can lead to disability and death. Signs of stroke. Numbness in the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body. Confusion, trouble talking, and difficulty understanding others. Trouble seeing in one or both eyes. Trouble walking, dizziness, and loss of balance or coordination. Severe headache. Stroke is serious. Every second counts. Learn the stroke signs and teach them to your family and friends. Call 911 immediately if you have any of the stroke warning signs. Treatment can reduce the damage from a stroke. You must get help within three hours of your first symptoms. Many strokes or transient ischematic attacks or TIAs have the same symptoms as a stroke. Many strokes or transient ischemic attacks or TIAs have the same symptoms as a stroke but they do not last as long and usually do not cause brain damage. A mini stroke is a warning that a stroke may occur soon. Mini strokes may last a few minutes or second, a few seconds or an entire day and then go away. These signs should not be ignored. As with the heart attack, act immediately if you or someone you know has a stroke symptom. Calling 911 right away will help prevent serious problems. I have brought a blood pressure cup if anyone would like their blood pressure measured. And at that time, any participants who were in attendance who wanted their blood pressure measured, we would do it. It was an electronic version. You just put it on their arm and push the button. Also on page 109, we have the Healthy Heart Wallet card, which has spaces for them to write down their uh, blood pressure that we just took. So what are ways to lower your blood pressure? Live a healthy lifestyle, maintain a healthy weight, be active every day for at least 30 minutes, eat foods hot, eat fewer foods high in salt and sodium, cut back on alcoholic beverages. Take your medicine the way your doctor tells you even if you are feeling well and watch your intake of salt. The body needs about 500 milligrams of sodium each day, which is about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Let's see right here. To stay within a healthy range, each person should have less than 2300 milligrams of sodium a day. This is one teaspoon of salt. If you have high blood pressure, you should have 1,500 milligrams of sodium or less a day. So that is two-thirds of a teaspoon of salt. Unfortunately, most people in the United States eat about four to 6,000 milligrams of sodium a day. This is two and a half teaspoons of salt. It's filled almost to the very top. So what are some foods that are high in sodium? Canned soups and vegetables, frozen dinners, macaroni and cheese, canned fish and meats, salmon, tuna, sardines and Vienna sausages, salty chips, lunch meats such as bologna, and other meats high in sodium such as hot dogs and bacon. Now we're going to go to page 111 and read the food label for sodium. Food labels tell you what you need to know about choosing foods that are lower in sodium. Here's a food label for packaged noodle soup. So you want to start at the top of your food label I will give you your serving size and number of serving. The serving size is one half block of noodles. The package contains two servings. Remember the number of servings on the label is for the num Remember the numbers on the label are for one serving, not the whole package. Then amount per serving. 
The nutrient amounts are for one serving. So if you eat the whole pack of noodles, you're eating two servings and you need to double the nutrient amounts. Your percent daily value. The percent daily value helps you compare products and quickly tells you if the food is high or low in sodium. Choose products with the lowest percent daily value for sodium. 5% or less is low and 20% or more is high. Nutrients. Listed are the amounts of sodium in one serving. These amounts are listed in milligrams. The choice is yours. Compare. Which would you choose? The low sodium soup uh, one serving, one cup of low sodium soup has 210 milligrams of sodium and 9% of the daily value for sodium. The packaged noodle soup, one serving is half a block of the packaged noodle soup, has 820 milligrams of sodium and 34% daily value for sodium. This is nearly four times the amount of sodium as the low sodium soup. So the low sodium soup is lower in sodium than packaged soup. Read the food labels and choose foods that are lower in sodium to help keep your heart strong. <gasps> Show picture top 4.7. This is what a food label looks like, and it is usually found on the back side of your food package. So now we're going to look at page 112 to 114 and go over Darnell's food choices. During a recent visit to the doctor, Darnell learned that he has high blood pressure. The doctor told him to cut back on sodium, the amount of sodium that he eats. Use the food labels to help Darnell choose foods that will help him follow his doctor's advice. Mark the number of each choice uh, for each pair and the space between the labels. So tomato juice has 750 milligrams of sodium, which is 31% of his percent daily value. And the orange juice has 5 milligrams of sodium, which is 0% of his daily value. So Darnell would want to choose the orange juice. Barbecue chicken has 345 milligrams of sodium. The herb roasted chicken has 30 milligrams of sodium. So he would want to choose the herb roasted chicken. Frozen peas have 40, 45 gram, milligrams of sodium, and canned peas have 215 milligrams of sodium, so he would want to choose the frozen peas. The buttermilk biscuit has 570 milligrams of sodium. The English muffin has 290 milligrams of sodium. He should choose the English muffin. The mixed nuts have 120 milligrams of sodium, and the unsalted dry roasted mixed nuts have zero milligrams of sodium. So he would want to choose the unsalted dry roasted mixed nuts. We're also going to look at sodium in foods on page 115. So on the left hand column, it is foods to choose more often, and they have low sodium. So you would like to choose more often chicken and turkey with the skin removed, Fresh fish or rinsed canned fish such as tuna or sardines. Canned foods packaged in water. Low sodium or reduced sodium cheeses. Low salt or salt free chips, nuts and pretzels. Plain rice, noodles or pasta. Homemade low sodium or reduced sodium soups. Fresh frozen no salt added or rich canned vegetables. Spices, herbs and flavorings such as cilantro, parsley, garlic powder, onion powder, vinegar and chili powder. On the right hand column, you will see choose to, foods to choose less often and they are higher in sodium. Smoked and cured meats such as bacon, ham, sausage, hot dogs, bologna, fat back, ham, hot, scrapple, and liver pudding. Canned fish such as tuna sardines that are not rinsed and salted dried codfish. Frozen TV dinners. Canned foods packaged in broth or salt. Most cheeses. Salty chips, crackers, nuts, popcorn, and pretzels. Quick cooking rice and boxes of mixed rice, <clears throat> potatoes, noodles, or macaroni and cheese, regular canned and instant soups, regular canned vegetables, pickles, olives, pickled vegetables, condiments and seasonings such as soy sauce, ketchup, garlic salt, seasoning salt, bouillon cubes, meat tenderizer, monosodium glutamate, which is MSG, and commercial Cajun or seafood seasonings. The latest research shows that foods rich in potassium are important in protecting against high blood pressure. 
Foods rich in calcium and magnesium may help too. Eat foods that are good sources of these nutrients. You can get your potassium from bananas, tomatoes, potatoes, oranges, prunes, spinach, and dry beans. You can get calcium from low-fat milk, low-fat cheese, reduced sodium cheese, low-fat yogurt, calcium fortified orange juice, leafy greens, and fresh and or rinsed canned fish. You can get magnesium from whole grain bread such as cereals, beans, nuts, seeds, okra, and spinach. So now we're going to look on page 119. Use herbs and spices instead of salt. So on this page, uh, it gives you a list of herbs and spices. And then also beside each herb and spice, it will give you what foods, meats, vegetables, soups that they are best used for. So for instance, all spice you can use in meats, fish, poultry, soups, stews, and desserts. Basil used in soups, salads, vegetables, fish, and meats. Uh, curry powder you can use in meats, shellfish, and vegetables. Deal weed and deal seed you can use in fish, soup, salads, and vegetables, and the list goes on. So on page 116, we are going to look at Miss um, Diane's Keep Your Heart and Mind, Eat Less Salt and Sodium. Do you know your blood pressure levels, numbers? A... Normal blood pressure is below 120 over 80 milligrams of mercury. If your blood pressure is between 120 over 80 and 139 over 89, you have prehypertension. This means you don't have high blood pressure yet, but you're likely to develop if you don't change your health habits. If your blood pressure is 140 over 90 milligrams of mercury or higher, you have high blood pressure. High blood pressure does not go away itself. Ask your doctor for help lowering it. Ask your doctor what your blood pressure number is and keep track of each reading on your wallet card. Spice it up. D discover how much flavor you can add by using spices and herbs. Miss Diane has learned that it is not hard to get your family to eat less salt and sodium. To break your family's habit of using a salt shaker at the table, try Miss Diane's secret recipe. Look for other salt-free seasonings in the grocery store. To make foods taste good without salt, I use cilantro, cumin, fresh garlic, parsley, onion, green pepper, oregano, and even a dash of hot pepper when I cook. Everyone in my family got used to the taste of foods with less salt. Also, it has a listing of Miss Diane's seasoning packet. And for our classes that we held, we had little baggies and we filled it up with the seasoning mix. This one hasn't been mixed all the way up yet and pass it out to our participants. Take the lead and try these simple changes. When you're shopping, buy fresh, frozen, or no salt added canned vegetables. Choose foods packaged in water instead of broth or salt. Buy fresh garlic or garlic powder instead of garlic salt. Choose foods labeled low sodium, sodium free, or no salt added when you're cooking. Slowly cut back on the amount of salt added when cooking until you don't use any. Add no salt to the water when cooking beans, rice, pasta, and vegetables. Cut back on meats high in sodium such as bologna, ham, hot dogs, and sausage. Rinse all canned veg products to reduce the amount of sodium. When eating, fill the salt shaker with a mixture of herbs and spices. Slowly cut back on the amount of salt added to the table until you don't use any. Use fruits and vegetables instead of salty snacks like chips, fries, or pork rinds. Darnell has learned to control his high blood pressure. He takes his blood pressure pills with breakfast every morning to make sure that he doesn't forget to take them. He walks daily. He has stopped smoking and found that food can still taste good with less salt and sodium. Make your personal pledge to do what Darnell has done. Look at these examples. For breakfast, he cooks oatmeal with fat-free or low-fat milk. Raisin, cinnamon, and no salt. For break, uh, for lunch, he uses leftover roasted chicken to make a sandwich instead of using lunch meat. For dinner, he makes his own soup with vegetables and half the usual amount of salt. And for snacks, he eats an orange instead of salty chips. That is all for today's session, and I hope you all learned something new today. Please list which, uh, any health goals you may have on your goal sheet. 
Thank you all for coming to this class, and I really appreciate each of you coming out to learn something new today. Please come back for our next classes uh, because we have sessions on the following topics. Cholesterol, how to reach and maintain a healthy weight, diabetes, how to eat healthy on a budget, and how to quit smoking.